when I go meet with somebody, first is the people. Then is the property. Then is the price. You never start talking price first. Almost everybody want to talk price first. If the seller tells me, as soon as I see them, hi, how are you? I'm going to tell you something. We need $3 million for that building. We're not going to budge. I don't want to hear any stories. What wonderful, sir. How long ago did you buy it? Such a beautiful building. Done. We have an agreement on something. He likes his building. I'm telling you, it's a beautiful building. It's a broker. And the broker says, look, look, I got a very difficult owner. They need to sell fast. There is no time for Mickey Mouse business, this and that. I'm not going to fall for any of this. I need something in writing. I need an all-cash offer. Wonderful. You're doing a great job. You've got a great listing. How long have you been in the business? Oh, let me tell you about when I started. I started, I was very young. My mom used to guide me when I filled up the paperwork. She was good. She was master of the comma and the zip code. She never made a mistake. You know, they're going to start telling you about the beauty of being in the real estate business. Get to connect with people. Get to know them. And then when you get to know the people, you can talk a little bit more about the property. They're more willing to listen. Because if you go in, and start talking about the price, there is no rapport, you're breaking affinity, and now you're gonna, you wanna discount the price because you're seeing things that don't wanna hear about it. Have you ever gone to somebody's home and told them something like, hey, I'm walking here, I know you want a couple million for this home, but the floor squeaks, ee, ee, ee. Did you notice the floor squeaks? He's gonna say, get out of my house. He didn't build any rapport. But you build rapport, how are you? A house I bought in Santa Clara where I live many, many years ago, it was 1998. Remember, the guy said, come and see me. Uh, I had called him, saw half an ad in uh, Yahoo Classifieds. Half an ad for sale by owner, property, Santa Clara. I said, perfect. I love Santa Clara because the utility system is close to the airport because I travel a lot. And it's perfect. To, for me, it's close to everything. And I said, okay, great. Called the guy. He said, uh, if you can be here in 20 minutes, that's good because we sleep at 8 o'clock. And it was like 7 something. I'm like, oh my gosh. I told my wife, you want to go take a look? And she goes, I got to do my hair. So goes, Don't worry about it, okay? <laughs> got in the car, went there, knocked on the door. Right at the time he told me to be there, took two steps back and I smiled. I had read a Chinese proverb that says, a man with a smile is welcome in any home. Never forgot that. Knocked on the door, two steps back. Gentleman opened the door, very tall. And he said, hi, are you Sharif? Just talk to me on the phone. I said, yes, sir. He said, come in. Shook his hand. And he said, as I step in, he said, I raised my two sons in this house and now they're grown, they're in Ventura County, and both of them are married, and we have grandkids. I said, wow, there must have been a lot of love in this house. It was so shocking to him that I acknowledged his, his moment. This is my home, he's telling me. I raised my kids, and now I have grandkids, and they're gone. He told me so much in one statement. I said, there must have been a lot of love in this house. As he closes the door, he put his arm right on my shoulder, and he said, come over, meet my wife. All I could see is smoke, and all I could hear was <laughs> I hope this smoke doesn't bother you, she says, as she smoked. Like, not at all, not at all. There was actually, there is a mirror, and I couldn't tell from the smoke if this is like a continuation of the house or it's a mirror. But it didn't matter. The price was good, the people are nice. Nice to meet you, ma'am. And I look out, it was getting dark, and there is a big yard with a big pool. I said, can I come out to take a look before it gets dark? And he goes, absolutely. I go, and I'm trying to open the sliding door. He said, you got to wiggle it, wiggle it. And click, 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 click. Move it up, move it up, move it to the left, like begging up a truck. <laughs> Finally, I opened the door. Did I say anything? Did I say, what kind of house is this? I'm still here. I'm building rapport. I'm not going to talk about the property. Sliding door, and then there were cats. Cats, so many cats in the backyard. He's got food. And cats like <laughs> running all over. He said, Nobody's feeding the cats in the neighborhood, so we take time to feed them. What nice people are these? They're so nice. And I come out, the bushes, the backyard, the pool. The pool was black. The water was black. Have you ever seen that movie called the Piranhas, uh, whatever, Piranha Experiment 2 or something? That's one of these movies. I'm like, oh my God. Did I say to him, what is going on here? Is this an experimental pool with some shark? Or? And he said to me, the pool just need a new filter. You need a new filter? You need a new pool. I didn't say anything. I said, the, the backyard is huge. You can get land like this in, in uh, Silicon Valley. He said, I started with the computer business when all this was farmland. And uh, I worked hard, and we spent every penny to enjoy our kids. So we built this pool. This pool cost us $50,000 30 years ago. I said, it's a beautiful pool. 
But I, 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 I couldn't even put my finger in it. I said, something's going to be, you know. I said, thank you. Go upstairs. We'll go to the second floor. I'm going up the stairs. And it goes, ee, ee, ee. Did I say, hey, your stairs, you got a problem here. Like nothing. He probably noticed it. He hasn't noticed it because he's been going up and down the stairs for 30 years. I walked into one room. His wife has dolls. It was the scariest thing ever. The dolls are looking at me. I go like this. Oh, my God, all the dolls are looking at me. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is amazing. He says, yeah, isn't it amazing? What a collection my wife has. I said, you should try to sell them on eBay. This was so long ago, eBay, like it was a big deal. He goes, no, don't say that to her. She'll be upset. Oh, now we're connecting on a secret against his wife. No, no, she should keep them. They're wonderful. He said, they're worth a lot. Oh, I understand. Walked around, went downstairs. I say, I don't ask people why do you want to sell because they're going to lie. Then we're going to build rapport. They're going to feel guilty for lying to me. So I don't ask them why you want to sell. All I said to him is, so how much is the price? And he said, I want this price. And I said, uh, you know, I would like to pay a little bit less if it's okay, but I'll buy it as is where it is. So he said, as he sat next to his wife, we don't even know if we want to sell. We don't even know if we want to sell. I said, why? He said, we were thinking to move to Ventura County to be next to the grandkids, but it's, it's going to be hard. It's just a lot of li it's life changing. I said, how about this? I buy, we close, and you can stay here for however many months you need until you find something comfortable for Ventura County. He looked at her as if like, hey, this guy's reasonable. What do you think? She puts the cigarette away. And she goes, come back tomorrow. Come back tomorrow at 8 o'clock. We're going to sleep on it. We're going to talk about it. I said, what time? He said, we wake up at 7.15. I grab the paper, 7.25. I have breakfast, 7.40. Come here at 8, 8 8.05. He's an engineer. 8, 8 8.05. Alarm clock, 7. I don't usually use an alarm clock. Woke up, told my wife she needs to come and bless. This is the house. She's doing her hair. Does it look better like this? Does it look like like this? It's good. It's good. It's good. We're going to be late. I want to be right on time. Look, you look beautiful. The hair is beautiful. Let's go. We went. Knocked on the door, 8 o'clock exactly, two steps back. Guy opened the door, Sharif, friendly face. Ah, that greeting, he's ready to sell. You can tell right away, looking me straight in the eye. If you would have been like, uh, come in, you would have known I shouldn't even step in, right? Opened the door, walked in. He said, okay, but we're going to need 90 days. I said, certainly. 90 days, I'll even write in the contract, if you need an extra month, I'll do it with no fee, nothing. I'll put it right here, as is where is, I'll bring an inspector. An inspector, why? You said as is. Yes, I just need to know what is is. He said, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> we wrote the contract, signed initial, initial. He got a copy, got a copy. I said, do you have a preference for the escrow company? Yeah, a friend of ours, she works at this place at First Republic. You go, I'll go right, right now, go all the way South Bascom. We'll have it open and we'll get it done. Do you know why I gave him three plus one months? Because I know mentally, as soon as we sign that contract, the person feels like, this is not my house anymore. We got a beautiful opportunity to be with the grandkids. What are we doing? Let's go, let's go. Sure enough, a month and a half later, we finished. I went in, and he gave me a big hug, this guy. Almost cracked my back. And he said, you are amazing. We feel a new energy in our life. We're sitting here smoking and looking at all this. This is new. You should see the new house we have. We're so happy. Our money goes a long way over in Ventura County. Thank you. For two, three years after that, they sent me a Christmas card. I sent them pictures of the changes I made in the house. They didn't even recognize the house. Changed everything. It's a beautiful house for us. It's a wonderful house. My, both, both of my kids were born at El Camino Real uh, Hospital. Uh, one time, one time I said to my kids uh, last year, hey, how about if we sell this house, go to a place I found in Ritz Carlton in San Francisco. Both my kids like, no, no, this is, we grew up in this house. Don't do this. I said, okay, okay, sorry. It was just an idea, just a concept. But I was able to build rapport with him, so he dropped the price a little bit because I barely had to mention the property. I gotta make a few changes here. He accepted that. Imagine somebody else coming in, the guy opens the door, hi, I raised two kids in this house. Oh, okay, so that's the house. My gosh, it's a little bit old. They lived here 30 years, so I thought it's newer. He's trying to negotiate and you think people are idiots? The guy's already now oh, breaking affinity. This is my home, man. And then you walk in, it's like, oh, I can't even open the sliding door. Have you noticed the sliding door is a problem? You know, this costs a lot of money to fix the sliding door. I don't know what to do. Can you open this? Like, make all this drama. What kind of pool is it? You do all this before you go upstairs. As soon as one squeaks and you point it out, he's going to say, get out. Get out of my house right now. Right now. You got my point? 